Big things have very humble beginnings. And when you look at the big companies out there, you might be surprised to know that a lot of them started in small garages or in other places that no one ever imagined. And those small companies actually took over industries that have been owned by the big brands for decades. Today, we're going to be looking at 15 companies that started small. If you're looking for inspiration, then this video is definitely for you, because honestly, you might be the one to make the next big Netflix corporation. Our first entry is Spanx. Some of you might be familiar with Sarah Blakely, one of the Shark Tank judges, and she knows how to make money, but more importantly, she knows how to make a good investment. She put $5,000 towards garments that make people look thinner. The company is really successful, and they make more than $400 million every year. Spanx got so much recognition that even Oprah approves of this product. And while Sarah's designs are what made her famous, it was her ability to manage money that made her wealthy. Our next entry is Spark Fun. This electronic retailer based out of Colorado started with a guy named Nathan Settle who just wanted to sell electronic kits and other odd stuff to engineers and anyone else who wanted to try exotic hardware and systems. And of course, while many people have no idea about this market, the ones who like this stuff have made SparkFun a very profitable business. Today, SparkFun is more than 100 employees and the company makes more than $30 million in sales every year. Our next entry is LinkedIn. You use Facebook to stay in touch with your family, Instagram to stay in touch with your friends, TikTok for the world to watch you dance and do fun stuff, and you use Tinder to get a date, amongst other things. And then there's LinkedIn, the one social network where you need to show the best version of yourself in the hopes of landing your dream job. Today, more than 700 million people are using LinkedIn, but what many of those users don't know is that this platform started in someone's living room. The founder, Reid Hoffman, started LinkedIn in 2002, and he slowly grew the business until it became what it is today, a $15 million company with 6,000 employees headquartered in California with some of the best views in the state. It's been almost 20 years since Hoffman gave birth to this idea, and his patience and perseverance obviously paid off. Our next entry is Craigslist. Tell me, are you looking for a used computer, a nice roommate to share your house with? Maybe you want to take piano lessons or look at the now defunct rant page. Or maybe you're lonely and just want to meet friends. Then Craigslist is the place for you. This classified advertisements website has been around for years and has helped many people find what they need in their communities. The founders of this space were some of the first people to use the .com domain, and you can kind of tell by looking at their website, which hasn't been updated in years. You can argue that if it works, don't try to fix it, but the layout is very simple and outdated. But it also doesn't stop people from searching for what they need and contributing to the millions of dollars that the company makes every single year. Our next entry is Airbnb. Sometimes tough times make us stronger and creative. When we feel like we can't move forward, some crazy ideas come to mind with the potential to disrupt the industries that we know. This is exactly what happened when two roommates couldn't afford their rent anymore. So they decided to rent out an air mattress for a guest and include a nice home-cooked breakfast with it. Now, they did have a few setbacks, but the business finally took off and people liked the idea of doing the same thing at their homes to make some extra income. Today, there are more than 1.5 million listings around the world and more than 2,000 people working at Airbnb's headquarters. A few years back, Airbnb's net worth was estimated at $25.5 billion. They disrupted the hotel industry because staying at someone's home is usually cheaper and more convenient than staying at a fancy hotel. Our next entry is Google. Back in the 90s, the idea of the internet was pretty basic. Not everyone had access to it, and people would have to go to libraries or search through their encyclopedias to get the help they needed to complete their research assignments. But while many people were still using actual books to access info, three guys in California were already working on what we now know as Google. Today, fewer people do go to the library and fewer people depend on books. Whenever they need something, they just ask Google, or being in a lowercase. The large Googleplex has over 57,000 employees and its estimated value is around $82 million. Our next entry is Microsoft. Microsoft, the name comes from microprocessors and software, and that was Bill Gates' main focus when he first started the company with his friend Paul Allen in a motel in Albuquerque, New Mexico. In 1980, they designed IBM's first personal computer, and towards the end of the decade, Microsoft became the largest software company for personal computers. Today, this company is no longer based in a motel in New Mexico, and they now have a large campus in Redmond, Washington. 
And of course, while Bill Gates is no longer part of the Microsoft executive board, he still considers the company a big part of his life, and he's committed to helping the company achieve its future goals. Our next entry is Apple. If you don't use Microsoft, then you probably use Apple products and software. Or do you use Linux? Please tell me, because I actually really like Linux. Anyway, back to Apple. The company was founded by Steve Jobs, and I guess we actually all know that at this point. The guy passed away a few years ago, but he truly revolutionized the tech with all of his inventions. And Steve Jobs is among the group of people who started a company in their parents' garage. Jobs and his friend Wozniak made their first computer in this space. And after a lot of drama, including the firing and rehiring of the company's founder and the threat of bankruptcy, Apple is now one of the more profitable companies in the world. Its estimated market value is above the $500 billion mark. Our next entry is Amazon. You can get pretty much anything from Amazon. With its headquarters installed over a 3.3 million square foot area and more than 200,000 employees, this company is able to deliver products to its more than 30 million customers. But things weren't always that big, of course. Like Apple, Amazon also began in someone's garage. But today, they're installed in one of the coolest neighborhoods in Seattle, Washington, and the company is worth more than $290 billion. The next entry is GoFundMe. Today we're so connected that we can all pitch in some money towards a common cause, whether it's stupid or good. This is why crowdfunding exists, to support projects or ventures by raising small amounts of money from hundreds or thousands of people. One of the most popular platforms is GoFundMe, which was founded in 2010 by Brad Damphouse and Andrew Ballester in San Diego, California. They put together their viral marketing skills along with a strong business model that turned into a company that is now valued at $600 million. Big ideas really can go a long way. Our next entry is a Shutterstock. I don't know if you know this, but in order to use photos, videos, and music for commercial projects, you need to get permission from the owners of the material. I mean, you don't need that if it's just a school project, but you definitely need to get the rights to use this stuff if you plan to make some money with it. One of the best sources for stock material is Shutterstock, which was started by a software developer who loved photography. His name is John Oranger, and he used 30,000 of his photos to launch a service that is now worth $2 billion. Our next entry is Shopify. Shopify made everything easier for anyone who wants to sell their products. Whether it's online or offline, you can use Shopify to accept payments without worrying of getting scammed or anything like that. What's funny is that originally, the people who invented Shopify were just looking for a practical e-commerce platform for snowboarders. When they realized that nothing available was working, they decided to create their own platform, and that's how Shopify was invented. Today, many people are using it, not just snowboarders, and its value is around $14 billion. Our next entry is Cards Against Humanity. Oh, I do love this game. Even car games can make a lot of money if there's a strong business model that supports them. And you might be surprised to know that Cards Against Humanity is just more than a silly party game for adults. The team behind it is a company that grows more than $10 million after getting started with only $15,000 that they got through Kickstarter. The thing is that people actually like their products. Besides a well-known card game, they also sell other non-conventional gifts that'll make you laugh. They know their audience, and they know them well. Now it's time for the day's best pick. The picture I chose for the day shows a guy that's holding a bunch of Netflix DVDs. Before it was the streaming platform we all know, Netflix used to deliver DVDs to people's homes and then they could exchange them for another DVD whenever they were done watching them. Pretty old school, I know, but it was a thing. Because, you see, no one used the internet to watch movies. Unless they were downloaded illegally, of course. But Netflix changed the industry. Let's see how it really started with Netflix. When did you subscribe to Netflix? Was it recently? I'm sure it wasn't that long ago. Do you even pay for it? Because, I mean, I don't. I just mooch off of people. Most people I know started using it around 10 years ago or so. But what many people don't know is that the company actually started over in 97. It was found by Mark Randolph and Reed Hastings, two entrepreneurs who wanted people to be able to watch any movie they liked from the comfort of their home. When it was introduced to the public, people were able to place DVD orders online, and then they would get them delivered at their doorstep. Netflix slowly became a strong competitor to Blockbuster, the place where people used to go to get DVDs back then. 
The years passed and Blockbuster had to shut down its shops while Netflix transformed into a strong business and became more popular when people were finally able to stream the movies online, getting rid of the obsolete DVDs. Today, Netflix has more than 200 million subscribers, and last year alone the company made more than $2.7 billion. Before we move on, do me a favor. My analytics show that only about 15% of you watching are actually subscribed. Come on guys, what's up with that? Can you guys please hit the subscribe button? You guys watch my videos every day anyway, so you might as well subscribe and keep up to date with every video we put out. Our last entry is YouTube. And last but not least, we have the one company that allows us to have this channel. Thank you, boss. If it wasn't for them, you wouldn't be watching this video right now. I don't need to tell you about all the people who use this platform on a regular basis, but what I think you should know is that the company had its humble beginnings in a rat-infested office above a pizzeria. Pretty promising, don't you think? No, actually not at all. But nothing stopped the founders from building the YouTube empire that we know of today. They are now based out of San Bruno, California, and they have more than 20,000 employees and they have millions of hours of content for all of their users to enjoy. In 2006, Google bought YouTube for $1.65 billion, and today the company's estimated worth is around $90 billion. Tell me, do you feel inspired yet? Which of these stories made you want to go out and follow your dreams? Let us know in the comment section down below. And hey, if you're working in a rat-infested office or in someone's garage, then I hope these stories inspire you so then we can talk about your company someday in the future. With all that said and done, that's our video for today, folks, and I will see you all next time. Later, everybody.